Okay, welcome to the second of our two videos looking at environmental market failure. In the first, we looked at some of the causes of environmental market failure and looked at some analysis diagrams that could be useful in the exam. This video will focus on government intervention in markets, both examples, analysis, and of course, crucially, some high-level evaluation. So when you're, when you're talking about intervention in a market, when you're evaluating policies, it's important to think about the three E's, effectiveness, efficiency, and equity. So for example, is an intervention, does it work in changing people's behavior and shaping business investment decisions? In other words, is a policy effective? Oftentimes, elasticity of demand can come into evaluation. Secondly, is a policy intervention efficient? Does it genuinely lead to a more efficient allocation of scarce resources in our example, of course, this is scarce natural capital. And thirdly, is a policy equitable? Is an intervention of various various types, is it fair across communities, across households, or does it actually lead in, in, in practice to an increase in income and consumption inequality? The key question is really who should bear the cost of an intervention? Very important in this area to think that the causes of market failure are multiple externalities, uh, information failure, property rights, for example. Therefore, you need a, combina a combination of interventions. When causes of something are complex, no single intervention, of course, will ever achieve the results you, you, you desire. And the other big thing to think about is whether the, whether the market, whether market forces can provide the necessary impetus to address these challenging environmental issues. It's often said that necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, a key concept is equity. Intergenerational equity is the idea of trying to achieve a degree of fairness across generations, not just the current population, but, but uh, people who will succeed us. That's hugely important when evaluating interventions. And also equity between countries of different stages of development between advanced rich nations and developing emerging countries. That's another aspect of equity. There are many interventions and strategies that are possible to use when addressing environmental market failure issues. This is why it could be and probably will be such a popular exam topic, not just in 2019, but in years to come. Carbon taxation, emissions trading, cutting subsidies, behavioral interventions, laws and regulations, public sector investment, tax incentives and global partnerships. Interestingly, Noah Smith famously said when carbon taxation, that a carbon tax will never solve climate change. And I think it's true for any part of these interventions that one intervention can, must be seen as a small piece in the jigsaw of a much broader climate strategy. And the successful countries see that. They see that they need a multiplicity of, of of uh, different interventions which hopefully fit together. Most economists favour carbon taxes, but actually the public support for any new environmental tax tends to be quite low. So carbon taxation, I think, is your go-to point if you get a question on environmental market failure. Typically a tax on either consumption or production or both for good or service which causes emissions. And of course, the main point here is designed to make the polluter pay for the externalities created designed to internalise the externality. And here's the analysis diagram you can draw for a negative externality from production, which increases the private marginal cost of supply, and in theory, in theory, reduces output towards Q1, which is a social optimum. Of course, the carbon tax also increases revenue to a government. The issue then is how that revenue is used. That's really important in evaluation. Carbon taxes do generate revenue. The elasticity of demand will determine how big those revenues are, so some people talk about a carbon dividend for the government, a fiscal dividend. But the crucial evaluation point is how those revenues should be used. We've done a separate video on carbon tax, if you want to go into this into more detail. Second option, of course, is carbon trading, similar to carbon um, uh, taxation in the sense of putting a price on carbon. Oh, by the way, this... Um, uh, this graphic shows countries in the world with the highest carbon taxes. Um, a number of countries have introduced a carbon tax as part of their climate change strategy. The best example to add to your notes is probably Sweden. Sweden's carbon tax is about $140 per metric tonne of carbon. Switzerland, not too far behind. Uh, the UK 
has a minimum carbon price of $25, which is about 18, 18 euros per ton. But there's some good examples of countries which have brought in carbon taxes. It's not just about carbon taxes. It's not just about carbon trading. It's about trying to change behavior. Interesting graphic here from a survey from last year about how Americans are trying to cut their carbon emissions by buying fuel efficient appliances, by planting trees, by share, car sharing, um, uh, stopping eating dairy products, etc. Uh, electric cars. Key valuation point, how much leverage, how significant could behavioral nudges be on changing the behavior of both producers and consumers? This is a moot point. It's one that you can definitely include in an answer. Carbon trading, of course, is a market based approach to cutting emissions. The rationale behind carbon trading is pretty simple. Uh, if, you, if you put a price on carbon, it makes carbon intensive production and consumption more expensive and creates an incentive for polluters, whatever chemical plants and cement factories, to invest in more climate friendly activities. For example, moving from coal to, to renewable. Uh, carbon prices can generate government revenue if you auction off the permits. But typically a carbon tax raises more tax revenue than does carbon trading. Again, we have a separate video on carbon trading. So if you want to revise that in more detail, just type to you carbon trading into the YouTube uh, search engine. China has, has announced it's planning to bring in a nationwide carbon trading system. That's worth including in an answer. But actually, the, the latest evidence from Bloomberg is that there's been a delay. China has significant ambitions in this area, but it's not yet delivering. Another aspect, if you want to go down a different pathway, is to bring in tougher laws, tougher regulations to protect the environment. The EU, of course, has this maximum CO2 emissions per kilometre travel for vehicles. I think Volkswagen still has to comply with that. London has just brought in the ultra low emission zone, a £12.50 daily charge for any vehicle that isn't ultra low emission zone, uh, ultra low emissions. Uh, again, we've done an essay plan on that one if you want to search for that. California last year, very good example. They brought in a new regulation requiring all new homes to have solar panels fitted. And the EU, of course, has, has brought in a regulation about how um, things like washing machines and fridges and dishwashers have to be disposed of. So you can go down the regulatory pathway as well. Another option is for the state to say, right, we need to invest public money, perhaps with a private partnership, but public money, government money in environmental infrastructure. I am a massive fan, by the way, of Eric Solheim and Mike Hudema. Two people on Twitter who are just fantastic at picking up great examples of environmental interventions and policies that seem to be working. So Copenhagen in Denmark, of course, has built uh, bicycle lanes, impressive uh, transport infrastructure. They want to become the world's first carbon neutral capital city. Investment in marine reserves and in uh, you know, mangrove ecosystems can help reduce the, the costs and the risks from tsunamis, for example. Pakistan is planting or planning to plant 10 billion trees as part of their climate change solution policies. Oftentimes, infrastructure spending can go hand in hand, can be complementary to other policies. Uh, one of the other options, of course, is to cut fossil fuel subsidy. Britain actually, according to this data, uh, has the highest subsidies for fossil fuels in the European Union, over £10 billion per year. It doesn't have to be government intervention. I think a good evaluation point, a star evaluation to say, well, what about the uh, what about businesses responding? Because uh, the challenge of the environment is so vast, so pressing at the moment, that businesses are seeing profitable opportunities. It's not just a question of corporate social responsibility. Many businesses have that, but they see value and profit from being ahead of the curve in terms of environmental challenges. Here's an example on the left-hand side here from uh, from Australia. Uh, where they're developing 100% uh, solar powered trains. Turning on the right hand side to coal country in, the, in, coal country in West Virginia, uh, using you know, trash into a, a fuel that burns cleaner than coal. Businesses responding to the challenges. Here's a slide which I think could be useful for your revision notes. It's just a way of just trying to bring together five 
different options when it comes to environmental interventions. Carbon tax, carbon trading, renewable subsidies, tougher laws, tougher regulations and infrastructure. You know, if you've got five different interventions, you'll do well in an exam question, particularly if you just focus on what the aims of those policies are, be able to pick out the major benefit, ideally with a, an analysis diagram to go with it, but crucially to have a, a risk, a drawback, a disadvantage at hand uh, to think about your evaluation points. And hopefully this will cover this in some detail. Take a few moments when you have a chance just to go through the key points there. So what are my A star evaluation points when it comes to environmental in interventions? First of all, you need a combination of policies to address what is a fundamental long-term problem. We know that this issue is becoming more and more pressing with every passing day, but you need a combination of policies. Secondly, don't forget there's always a risk, a danger, that a, a well-intentioned environmental policy could lead to government failure. So a minimum price on carbon, for example, could cost jobs in the steel industry. There could be some unintended consequences of offering big subsidies for solar panel farms, for example. So always be aware of the risk of government failure. Raise the question about whether the market itself can find solutions. There are some incredibly bright people working on these issues. And if the market, through the price mechanism, can find durable and scaled solutions, that could, in a sense, diminish the need for wholesale government intervention. Now, what steps are some of the big corporations around the world taking to cut their emissions and to promote sustainability? One of the big changes last year was renewables. Innovation and economies of scale have cut the cost of solar power globally by 85% since 2009, and there are big, big cost curve reductions still to come. So perhaps this is the this is the change, the dynamic that people want to see. Remember, the three C's when assessing interventions: are they effective? Do they work? Are they efficient? And crucially, are they equitable? Okay, I've put together. Uh, there's a link on the in the collections page. In the notes for this video, I've put together a whole collection of resources on environmental economics, some essay plans, some presentations, some exam questions and things. So if you go to tutor to you and just go to collections and put in environmental economics, that should link you to one of my latest resources on this hugely important issue. I know that many, many students are revising environmental economics ahead of their 2019 papers. Uh, if it doesn't come up on the micro paper, surely a synoptic question as well. So good luck with the revision. And hopefully this is a, a really interesting area for analysis and evaluation. Thank you.